All right, people, welcome back. Today we are talking about nine small but highly useful Power BI hacks. Three for Power Query, three for DAX, and three for visualizations. All right, no waiting. Let's go find this out. All right, let's just start with my first love, that is Power Query, and the first trick is see the row. Let's just say that you're working with this data right here on the screen, and perhaps you have many columns. At the moment, I don't have many columns, but perhaps let's say you have many columns, and you're, let's say, trying to track the data for the row, and you maybe just through the eyes, take a look at row number four, and then you keep the mouse in like a ruler or something, and then you scroll through all the way to the right to take a look at what data is there on the other columns on the right. That is a terrible method to do that. What you can do is you can click literally on row number four. Row number four is going to be pulled out as a record. And right now here you can see that you have all the columns and here is all the data for row number four vertically arranged so that it becomes convenient for you to take a look at the row. Trick number two, find the column. Let's just say that you're working with a fact table in Power Query, which is not recommended, but let's just say that you're working with a fact table. Now, it's going to be really hard to just scroll left and right to take a look at where does the column exist in the data. What you can do is literally press the Control G shortcut, which is the shortcut to go to a column in Power Query, pick up the column that you want. Let's just say that I would want channel, click on OK, and that is the channel that you were looking for, which you weren't able to find with your naked eyes, although it was right there in front of you. Trick number three, filtering the value by selecting the value. That's incredibly powerful, and I use that quite a few times. Take a look. So let's just say that we have this product ID column, and I'd like to apply a filter to any value. Let's just say that this is the value that I'd like to apply the filter to. I can literally go select that value, right click on that, say text filters, and I can say equals or any other filter that I'd like to apply. So as soon as I say equals, it's gonna take that value as a filter, put that out in the formula bar, and the filter is applied. Isn't that just amazing? All right, the second set of tricks have to do with DAX, and here is the first one, which is nothing but the visual enter. Take a look. So I've written a very simple measure right here, which is nothing but top two products. Against the year and against the month, what I get to see are the best two selling products in that particular month. In case you are interested to take a look at the measure, here is the measure. Very simple use of the top end function. I'm just picking up the two products in the order of total sales and concatenating the name of the products, which at the moment is separated by a comma. And you can see that we have a comma right here, we have a comma right here. Although the comma is absolutely fine, but it does not provide a strong visual indication of where does the first product end and where does the second product start. So instead, I'd like to press an enter to move the second product in the new row. Guess what? What you can do is universally throughout Power BI, wherever you want to have an enter, you can use this code called unicharacter10, unichar and then 10. 10 means enter, close the bracket and press enter. And this is going to literally provide a visual enter in your Power BI. You can use this in concatenate X function, any other concatenation that you're doing, but in case you would want to visually have enter in your measures, this is a good way to go about it. DAX trick number two, reverse filter. How do you apply a filter from the fact table to the dimension table in a one-to-many relationship? Take a look at the model that I'm working with. It's a very simple model. All that I have is the products table here and the calendar table here, and this is my sales table, and just some standard one-to-many relationships. And you can see that the behavior of the relationship is a standard one flow direction, and that's the one side, that's the many side, a one directional flow from the one side to the many side, just like we always do it. Now, let's just say that I go over to my products table and in the products table, I would like to calculate that how many unique selling price points do I have? That means that I'm trying to calculate the distinct count of this particular price column. How many unique prices do I have? So if we have $15 three times, I'm not gonna count it three, I'm just gonna count it as one. Well, sure enough, you can go ahead and write a very simple distinct count measure on the product table price column. And as soon as you drag this measure to your pivot table or the visual, you're going to see the value and you're going to see nine all across because there are nine distinct values. But nine different unique products were not sold in the month of October. They were far lesser because we probably did not sell all the products in the month of October. So this at the moment is an unfiltered value. That means that if you take a look at the products table, the distinct count of the price column is very well executed in the products table. But the problem is any filter 
from the calendar table or from the sales table will not be able to go in the reverse direction and try to filter the products. How do we solve that kind of a problem? Well, what you can do is you can use the expanded tables concept. Let me show you how. What you can do is go ahead in that particular measure that we were making and you can wrap this around in the calculate function. And as the second part of the calculate function, I can write the name of the fact table. That's it. This particular concept is called expanded tables. In case you want to read more about it, I'm going to leave a few articles for you to read it. But this actually triggers the reverse filtering that we are trying to achieve. As soon as I commit to this formula and press enter, you're going to see that the values do change. And I can see that different number of unique price points being calculated in my table, which is pretty neat. Final trick in the DAX arsenal is calculating the max for multiple measures. Take a look at this little visual that I have, which is where I have three measures. One is promotional sales, affiliate sales, and organic sales. These are three separate measures that I have created for the three channels of sales that we have. In case you want to take a look at the measures, they're really simple. All that I'm doing is calculating my total sales for a particular channel, and I've dragged such calculations onto my visual. Now, let's just say that the ask is to calculate which one of the three is the max and that's what I'd like to do for which obviously the function that comes to my mind is the max function and if I just go ahead and start to write the max function I'm going to say hey find the max between promotional sales and then find the max between organic sales now the problem is as soon as I have written two different measures it doesn't really give me an option to write the third measure that means this is going to limit to only two parts of the calculation and you cannot enter the third argument what do you do in that scenario well, guess what? You can use the max x function and create a pseudo or an artificial table. Well, let's just take a look. So I'm going to start with the max x function. In the max x function, the first thing that I'm going to write is create a table because any x function starts with a table. And I can use the curly braces to make a pseudo table. So in the table, I'm going to pull in my three calculations, which is nothing but promotional sales. Then I'm going to pull in my organic sales and then I'm going to pull in my affiliate sales. Once you have pulled in all the measures that you need, you can close the curly braces to close the pseudo table. Now this table that we have created is going to have a standard column by the name of value. And I can say, hey, please give me whatever is the max of the value column, close the braces and press enter. And now if you drag that measure onto your visual, you're going to see that whatever is the max of the three measures or as many measures as you would have provided in the max X function gives you the correct value. This is absolutely crazy. All right. Thanks for still sticking around. And before we jump on to the last part, which is visualizations, I'd like to give a big shout out about my tax and my power query training courses. In case you are a beginner in Power BI and you'd like to get on top of the fundamentals really well, you understand the core concepts so that you get confidence in solving harder problems of your own data. I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It is going to be super duper awesome. All right, let's just move to some visualization tricks. The first visual trick, which is nothing but padding. I almost always use this trick to enhance the quality of my table or the pivot table that I'm making. And this little trick makes the pivot table look instantly cleaner and more spacious. Take a look. So what you can do with most of your tables is that increase the padding of the tables, which is the distance between the top of the row and the bottom of the row. How do you do that? You can click on the table right here, go over to the format, go over to more options, and that opens the format in which I'm going to search for nothing but padding. And here in the grid, you see in the options, we have something called as padding. I typically go on with the padding of about four or five. And if in case you just maybe want to have five or something, you can see that immediately it just increases the space on the top and on at the bottom and this is going to enhance the quality and the breathability of the data that you're presenting in the table and hopefully that will look nice trick number two which is resizing columns this is insanely good please take a look so here i have all of these columns right here let's just say that i want to resize the columns generally the way that we have been doing historically up until this point of time is by literally dragging the mouse and squeezing in or opening up the columns like that but no more i like to use the keyboard and that gives me more flexibility and speed as well. So I'm going to click on the column header right here. And as soon as I do that, I can use the shift and the arrow keys to increase the column size or decrease the column size. I can use the tab key to move to the second column, increase the column size with shift in the right arrows or decrease shift in the right arrows and things like that. And again, the same thing, shift right and shift left 
This is absolutely bananas. All right, my final trick is lock objects. Let's just say for some situation, you're trying to present the data within Power BI desktop. Ideally, you should present the data on Power BI service, give access and have the sharing features enabled and all of that. But let's just say for some reason, you're just doing that in Power BI desktop. Now, obviously when the person is interacting with your model, accidentally, he should not move the table or should not delete the slicer and things like that. To prevent from the objects being moved on the visual canvas, what you can do is you can go over to the view tab and just lock the objects right here. Remember that you will have to do it on every single screen. And once you lock the objects, the objects will still interact. I mean, you can click on it and you can interact and all that kind of stuff, but they would not move from the screen. All right, that's been it. Let me know how did you find these nine tricks and which of these tricks were absolutely crazy helpful for the kind of work that you do. Before you go, don't forget to check out my courses on DAX and Power Query in case you are a beginner, like I said before, and you'd like to get on top of the fundamentals really well, master the hard parts, and then start to solve your own data problems, I'd recommend that you take a look at my courses. They are going to be super duper helpful. All right, if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments and I'll be glad to reply. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye now.